Okay, today I'm going to do a walkabout of these five Unitron Altaz telescopes set up. This is the diminutive 40 millimeter Altaz. Cute little telescope. I love this little scope. His little Altaz mount. Typical Unitron. Real smooth. Very nice, very effective. Now we go up a notch here to the 60 millimeter. The 60 millimeter is bigger and beefier. If you compare the springs and spring housings, those are springs inside there. You compare the spring housings here, you can see this is much bigger. Very effective. Everything Unitron is well designed. Here's a 75 millimeter Altaz. Notice that this is bigger. Again, the housing here is bigger, meaning the springs inside are bigger. This is also counterweighted, so it's got a counterbalance system that makes it much easier. As you can see, I unlock it and it doesn't even move. So that's good. Now, let's compare that with the really big one. This is the 150 and this is the newer one. I'm not sure when they started making them in this style. I'll show you an older one here in a minute. Much beefier. Uh, same basic philosophy. Again, I'll loosen it and you can see that it's pretty well balanced. The counterweight really helps things. Nice big beefy and look at the size of the springs, the spring housings in here. Anyhow, this is a very, very nice big beefy 150 mount. Now this is a 150 mount, which is for a 4 inch F15 telescope. And this is another 4 inch F15, a much older one. Again, I'm not sure when they changed over. I think it was in the early 60s. They changed from this style of mount. And this mount has its deficiencies. It's okay. Everything Unitron is at least functional. So this is pretty good, but it's a little bit awkward. And you can see that it's, uh, you know, it's fine. It works fine. It's, I've used the telescope and it's not bad at all. But it's very awkward to reach this. That's, I'd say, the only... in. The only deficiency with this is it's hard to reach this. When you're back at the eyepiece back here, it's hard to reach up here and get to the telescope. Slow motion control for altitude. This one, on the other hand, the newer version of the 150, is much more convenient with these extension cables. Uh, without the extension cables, it would be about the same. I mean, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But with the extension cables, this design permits the use of these extension cables, that makes it a much different ball game. It's a real dream. Very smooth and easy to operate. Um, very functional. Nothing wrong with this telescope mount at all. Very, very effective. Nothing wrong with any of them, really. So there's a quick look at some Unitron Altaz mounts compared one with the other. Let me give you a close-up look at the operation of this telescope. This is the newer Unitron 150 mount. And as you can imagine, when you're looking at something in the sky, you're going to be down here somewhere, perhaps, or up there somewhere. You might be in some different position here, like so. I want you to notice that no matter where you are, these remote controls, these cable remotes, are very, very convenient for you. Lock it down, lock it down, and I'd be looking through a star diagonal here, and I was doing this just last night, looking at Jupiter, it's beautiful, it's very easy, very nice, easy to operate, smooth, very, very effective, very useful mount. The only thing that would be better would be, of course, a, an equatorial with a clock drive. So, this is very, very nice, nice little telescope mount. Okay, let's compare that with this mount. And I'll show you just how much trickier this is. This is an effective mount. It works just fine. But to loosen it, you change it there, right? So I've got control there. And probably you would not even often lock it down in azimuth because it's easy enough to move like so with azimuth. But for altitude, you have to reach up here. Now you're looking down here. And you have to reach all the way up there. Sometimes you can do it with your left hand or whatever. But it's a little bit less convenient. The controls are not uh, as convenient and easy to grasp as with the other Unitron 150. Which of these two telescope mounts is bigger? 
photographically they might look identical. As a matter of fact, they're pretty much identical in terms of their configuration. Look, a little trick of perspective here. It only looks bigger because it's closer, of course. Fair comparison, you can see that the one mount is much smaller than the other. It's a much smaller mount. It's easy to get confused. In the photographs, you could easily be persuaded that this mount is about the same size as that mount. In fact, they are very much not the same. I'll put them next to each other here for the next shot. When you look at them side by side, you can see there's quite a bit of difference this mount. Much bigger. Look at that. Compared to that mount. Considerable difference in size. The design is almost identical. Function is almost identical. Just everything is scaled up by a factor of approximately two with the bigger mount. I thought I'd show you how this works with this mount. How these springs are loaded here. How this mechanism works. In case you ever have to take one of these apart. Probably most of you Unitron collectors already know this, but maybe not. I uh, just recently discovered this and it only applies to the bigger mounts that I've experienced at least. This one, the 150 and the 75 millimeter with the counterweight both work this way. Um, the spring is loaded in there. It's got a very, here's, this, here's a spring. And uh, there's no tension on it now. So it's easy to push this back and forth, change things if you ever need to make any modifications to it. That's how you would do it. So in this particular case, taking this apart comes out like that. This should have a screw on cap here that holds this to the mount and for some reason I didn't get that with the mount. So I'm going to make one. I'll make one on my lathe. Anyhow, so taking that apart became much easier when I did that.